British Columbia, West Coast, Canada News. For those of you who are from the East Coast, here's why you should be interested. It's your country. It's your country. One of my goals is to quote, make Canada smaller by making us closer. Let us know about each other's problems. One of the beautiful things about Canada is it's so big, so people are spread out. It might seem like you don't have your skin in the game if you're from another coast, but it's not true. It's often the same factors and the same results. Murders, deaths, and nowadays we have fentanyl. It hit both coasts hard and at the same time. Then there's criminalized groups, such as gangs, bikers, and even interprovincially, they are cooperating together. We have seen evidence of this. And so, shouldn't the community band together as well? Shouldn't they work together to keep it wholesome? After all, deeply entrenched criminal organizations are working nationwide. And so today, let's focus our attention to BC gangland news one treasure trove or place to get news on bc gangland is journalist kim bolin because she's been going at it passionately for over a decade indeed she has produced excellent coverage on bc gang wars such as her two decade coverage of vancouver gangs so you could imagine my surprise when i found out she wrote an article just recently on May 3rd, keeping us up to date, which contrasts immediately with the title of the article. One man killed, one wounded in Surrey gang shooting. <laughs> shooting victim Jaden Prasad had links to the Brothers Keeper gang, according to sources. Unfortunately, the young man of 20 years of age had links to the Brothers Keeper gang, and he was shot to death in Surrey Tuesday night, victim of the latest homicide of the ongoing gang conflict. And as the picture showed, he was killed minutes after 8 p.m. as he sat inside the Black Dog Durango in the parking lot of the Circle K convenience store at 148th Street and 108 Avenue in Guildford. But that's not it. A second man was injured in the shooting as well and taken to the hospital but has since been released. So, what was this about? Well, a possible suspect vehicle was located a short time later in Langley with indications that an attempt was made to light it on fire. Classic BC assassination, which is used, of course, to burn all the DNA evidence. Imagine burning a car. That leaves a huge scene. It's a big risk. You'll do it because that's how critical the DNA factor is in getting caught. And so, I hit investigators are trying to build a timeline of Prasad's activities leading up to the homicide. Desi said, like many of the recent targets in the years-long war, Prasad was young and without a criminal record. One poor resident's nieces and nephews were playing outside and ran inside when the shooting happened. The family said it was roughly six or seven shots disturbing the peace of children who were playing. And so I turn your attention to RCMP Assistant Commissioner Manny Mann, who says, The ongoing conflict that originated in Lower Mainland is dynamic in nature and no longer confined to geographic area of the Lower Mainland. Other groups are also involved, like the Wolfpack Coalition and Red Scorpions. So here's the kicker. Some of these disputes date back 20 years to a time when some of those caught now in the conflict were not even born. Or at the very least, they were learning to walk. And the BC gang landscape has become a melting pot between these progenies and their predecessors. In fact, as the war raged between the Brothers Keepers and the United Nations, the BC government targeted Red Scorpions. In the news, the Office of Civil Forfeitures seeks to keep cash and cars seized by the police. For those who don't know, six years ago, in 2017, there was a police investigation launched targeting the Red Scorpions, and the seven men named in the lawsuit are the original organizations. The Red Scorpions, who had fought for drug turf, and those named are the brother of Surrey 6 killer Cody Havisher, Justin, who was shot to death in Surrey in September of 2019 and whose murders remains unsolved. Yet his brother Cody is fighting charges and he insists that his involvement in the high-profile murder case, the Surrey 6, that police misconduct taint the case against him and for that reason he will be back in BC Supreme Court on July 26th. The Director of Civil Forfeitures says in a statement of claim that Justin Havisher, Skongor Skuz, Kyle Latimer, Billy O'Neir Kim, Jacob Angel 
Pablo Pereira were, quote, members of the Red Scorpions, an organized crime gang operating in British Columbia. The report says that by early 2017, the Red Scorpions were operating a dial-a-dope drug line in South Delta and Richmond. Latimer, posing as cooks, rented a suit on the 12th floor of 5177 Brig House for, quote, the use of the Red Scorpions as their base of operations in Richmond and to further the drug trafficking activities. Another quote, the undercover police officers made purchases of cocaine and heroin and fentanyl from drug lines eight times over periods of three months between April and July 2017 on a kitchen table in a backpack. But police also found cannabis, cocaine, heroin, fentanyl, carfentanil, crystal methamphetamine, and pardon my language, other shit, as well as score sheets, digital scales, a cash counting machine, and 10 cell phones. And to add on top of those gangsterism charges, there was also three rifles and ammunition and a Stephen Madden backpack containing body armor, gloves, face masks, a hoodie, a plastic bag with gun and ammunition inside. And within a search of the suit on 8633 Capstan Way in Richmond, where Havisher lived, police found more drugs, another 24,000 cash, and a kit containing gloves, tracking devices, tape, zap traps, body armor, knives, and a hatchet. The civil forfeiture case that also named Latimer, Pereira, Skooks, and Code, and others resulted in the forfeiture of their vehicles, cash, and jewelry, and items seized in parallel to the investigations. And now the police want to keep those assets. And that's it for today. Thank you for joining us, crafty ones. Join us. Help me help you help us make Canada better. Subscribe and stay informed on the latest on the Canadian Mob Wars.